Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Running Otaku. I am the Running Otaku. And today we're going to talk about goals, how I did in my 2019 goals and my goals for the upcoming year. So as many of you know, Seth James Damore has his studio, you know, his studio where he does his shoe reviews and kind of summary for the day. Well, here we actually do have a studio. This is a yoga studio. My wife does not run at all, but she does yoga six days a week. So we built this kind of 10 foot by 10 foot or about three meters by three meter studio in our backyard. So without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll start first with looking at my goals for 2019, which I set exactly one year ago. So you can see a few things here. <laughs> one, I love numbers. So there's a bunch of numbers on here, but a few things I wanted to point out. So you can see here that I have a wide variety of goals starting from one mile, going all the way up to the marathon. And that's because I like to mix things up throughout the year. So I'll do like, let's say a 12 to 16 week marathon training cycle. And then maybe I'll do a, eight week mile training cycle. And I like to do this for a few reasons. One, I think it makes me an overall better runner uh, to be you know, good at a bunch of different events. Two, it breaks up the monotony of the year and you don't get to a rut. So if you're only training for marathons and you keep doing one marathon training cycle after the next, it can get kind of dull after a while. So this kind of helps mix up. And three, I think it really does a lot to improve my performance. So for instance, when I do the marathon training, you know, that's mostly building my aerobic base. When I'm doing the mile, it's just the opposite. I'm doing anaerobic power uh, and really getting that leg turnover and form. And then when I train for events like the 5k or so, you know, that's helping my VO2 max. Okay. So that explains kind of the range of events. And then you'll see another thing. There are three goals for each event. So for example, for the mile, I have a C goal of 513, a B goal of 509, and an A goal of 459. And the way I set this is my C goal is a goal I think I can achieve, but will still be proud if I do. So not too hard, not too easy, but a feeling of accomplishment. My B goal is really the kind of target that I'm shooting for. Uh, so when I'm training for a certain event, that B goal is the pace that I want to hit and I build my training based on that. And then the A goal is only if my training cycle has gone extremely well and I feel great during race day, then I'm going to risk it a little bit uh, and see if I can hit that A goal. So these are the goals. And then you can also see I've done a couple things gray. So I put the age graded performance here. Uh, so you can see uh, where I am with regards to my peers for these times. And you can see here, for instance, 75% who is a local age group podium, 85% age group win, etc. And then the other number next to it. So for example, hair for the mile, this 80% equivalent is equal to a 438 mile. If I were at my peak, which, you know, is between 20 to 35 years old. Um, so this is kind of a helps to create an apples to apples comparison of masters runners versus people that are in their prime. You can see what the equivalent times would be. So anyways, one year ago today, these are the goals I set for 2019. Now let's take a look to see how I actually did. And here are the goals uh, and my performances. So for the mile, you can see I actually was just under my B goal, which is great, past my B goal at 5.07 for the mile. And this was done on a track in a miles master's race. So it was the full 1,609 meters, not 1,600. Uh, and I think I was fourth or fifth, something like that overall in the master's division for this race, uh, but a really great performance. I thought I could only run about four, or excuse me, 5.13, and I pulled off a 5.07, and the last lap was really fast. It was a 71, which is quite fast for me. The 5K, I ran the Bowerman 5K, and I was in really good shape for this. This was in uh, the summer, uh, and I bombed. I ran like an 18.30, and I don't know why, and I was super pissed off. So the following weekend, I went to the local high school track and did a 5k solo time trial and ran this 1740 um, and was really happy with that. So that was my C goal, not quite the B goal, but the C goal. And then the 10k was a 4th of July race and it was just in the middle of my 5k training block. I had hard workouts during the week, no taper whatsoever. 
and it was in a park so a few hills and a lot of turns and things like that so i still hit my seagull but i think actually that if i were tapered and or on a flat kind of 10k road race i probably would have hit the beagle of 3659 either way i was still pretty happy with that and then next was my best race of the year this was the uh, beaverton half marathon i smashed my beagle um, ran 121.42 and was so happy with that. I was training to actually run just sub 125 because my PR at the time was only 128. Um, and I thought on a really good day I could run a 123, but I just felt fantastic that whole day. Ran basically 613 per mile, almost the whole way, and came up with this 121.42. Now that equates to if I were in the condition to run the marathon, of about a 250 marathon, uh, which would have been amazing. But I only did one marathon in 2019. That was the Boston Marathon and completely bombed. This is the only distance where I did not hit my goal. I ran 318. And what happened was I was actually at the halfway around 128 and I was still on pace for a sub three at mile 19. But actually from the very beginning of the race at the gun, my quads were a little bit sore. They continued to get sore. And by the last 10K, I was basically just walk jogging. Um, so disastrous performance. But actually, I still enjoyed the experience overall. It was great to see Boston because my dad had run it 20, 25 times. And it was my first Boston experience. So overall, I'm really happy with the year. I got all my Bs or C goals, um, except for the marathon, which I totally blew. Now, just to show you my kind of performances in terms of age grade uh, and equivalent times. So you can see here, for example, that mile was a 81.58 and that half marathon, which I was really proud of was a 81.26. And that's great progress for me because I've typically been the type of runner that excels at the mile and the 5K, but does really poorly relatively in the half and the full marathon. So here you can see I'm starting to even up. I'm really starting to build that base and becoming a better runner. And these equivalent times are pretty interesting too. So my mile equivalent was a 432, which actually would be better than my lifetime PR, which I set in high school. I was 17, I ran uh, 438 for the mile. So this is slightly better than that. And my 5K in high school, I never really trained much in long distances. So my lifetime PR is like 16.30 for a flat 5K on the road. And this was an equivalent of a 15.42. So even though I'm slower now than when I was 17, 18, relatively I'm a better runner and that's what makes me so excited. So with all that said, here are my goals for 2020. Now you can see I have a C goal, a B goal, and an A goal, just like uh, for this year. The C goal was set at basically what I ran Maybe a little bit slower than what I ran for this year for each of those distances. Um, the idea is, again, those were really good performances. So I would be happy if I can equal them again this year. So that's what I set as my C goal. Something attainable, uh, but still I would be proud of. Now the B goals, these are the times I'm really shooting for. So you can see 505 from the mile all the way down to essentially 255 for the marathon, uh, which would smash my lifetime best of 309. It's a really weak time for me. So I think that 255 is possible. And I plan on going for it at the Eugene Marathon, which is in April this year. And then the A goals. Now these are the goals I'd really like to hit. They might be a little bit over ambitious. The mile one, I might be able to hit 459. I'm not sure. I'd, I'd love to be able to go uh, sub five as a 50 year old. So we'll have to see. And then finally, you'll see I have one more uh, row here called XC, which is cross country. And here I don't have a time. I just have top seven and top five. And what that means is when the cross country season starts for 2020 in the fall, I will have just turned 50 years old and I'm joining a master's team, a 50 plus team that is every year nationally ranked and oftentimes wins the national team championships. So my goal is just to make the top seven, the traveling team for this 50s plus, uh, which would be a huge accomplishment. <laughs> These guys are fast. They're still running in the 240s for the marathon and I don't know, 16, seven, 16 minutes at least uh, for the 5K. So they're really fast. So if I can make the top seven, I'd be super happy. 
And then my A goal is to not only make the traveling team for the national championships, but to score for them or to be in the top five. So that's what I'm shooting for in December of 2020. Okay, so that's it. Nice and simple. What about you guys? What are your goals for 2020? Are they time-based? Are they streak-based? Like you want to run a certain number of days in a row? Maybe total distance for the year? Or you a certain placing at a local race or a national race? Anyways, whatever your goals are, put them in the comments below and let's see where we're all trying to get for next year and we can all encourage each other. All right, that's it for today. If you liked what you saw, you can hit the like button. If you really liked it, hit subscribe and that little bell next to it. That way, you'll be instantly notified every time I upload a new video. So that's gonna be it for today. Thanks and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.